Escitalopram, better known by its brand name of Lexapro, is a common antidepressant used for major depressive disorder and general anxiety disorder, although it has been used for many different illnesses. It has been in use in America since the 1980s, and its usage grew steadily throughout the 90s. However, its use, particularly in minors, has been controversial. In 2004, the FDA put a black box warning on all SSRIs for its suicide risk in young people. This caused a plummet in use across America. The group SSRI Citizen has been protesting it since 2004 under the slogan, Unsafe at Any Dose. Whether or not you approve of the drug or use it regularly, it's important to have a full understanding of what it is, how it works, and its impact on its users. Lexapro is an active s enantiomer of the drug citalopram. This means that it has the same formula, but is a mirror image of the other drug. They look nearly identical, but you cannot superimpose one on the other, and they bind to different receptors. That last bit is essential, as it changes the function of the drug a lot. Lexapro has a molecular formula of C20, H21, F, N2, O. And it looks like this. Here's a 3D model. And if you are curious, one mole of it weighs 324.392 grams, not an oxalate form. How does Lexapro even work? When you take Lexapro, it is digested in the liver by the CYP3A4 and CYP2C19 enzymes, part of the cytochrome P450 enzyme system. It travels through the bloodstream to the brain as a long-distance ligand, where they bind to neurons. Lexapro is part of a class of drug called SSRIs, which stands for Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitors. This confused me a lot because I was like, inhibitor, don't we want more serotonin? But it actually does cause an increase in serotonin in your brain. Okay, so setting the stage a bit here, here we have the postsynaptic neuron, the presynaptic neuron, and the synapse, or the space between them. This is where serotonin gets transferred to send a signal down a neuron chain. Normally, when one neuron transfers serotonin to another, some of the serotonin rebinds to the first one, which weakens the signal. SSRIs act as a competitive inhibitor to the serotonin, binding to the reuptake receptors on the first neuron so serotonin can't. This forces more serotonin to stay in the synapse, increasing the likelihood that it will bind to the receptors on the other neuron and send a stronger signal. Serotonin impacts mood, sleeping, and eating, and when serotonin is transferred between neurons, a happiness signal is sent out. Therefore, Lexapro increases the amount of happiness you feel whenever serotonin is normally released, such as when you succeed at something or see a loved one. If you Google Lexapro, you'll find mainly pages and pages of side effects. There are a lot of side effects, and they vary for each person, so it can be difficult to tell how it will impact you. The cause of side effects are hard to pin down, but there can be several causes. The first is that serotonin controls more than just your mood, so increasing its uptake could impact your eating and sleep as well. Another reason could be interaction between other drugs you are currently taking, such as a blood thinner. Finally, it could be binding to other receptors in the body. As it is a long-distance ligand, it travels throughout all of the organs through the blood, but only binds to certain receptors. While we assume the only receptor that could accept it is a serotonin reuptake receptor, there could be others elsewhere, and when it binds to those, other signals are sent. But there could be other reasons that I just don't know. There is a long list of side effects. Here is all of the side effects I could find. Note that side effects always vary between people. Common side effects. Insomnia. Rashes on the skin. Headaches. Joint and muscle pain. Stomach pain. Nausea. Diarrhea. Lowered libido. Difficulty ejaculating or orgasming. Vivid dreams. Dry mouth. Sore throat. Sweating. Shaking. Loss of appetite. Somnolence. Side effects in children. Thirst. Heavier periods. Urination troubles. Increased risk of suicide, aggression, or anxiety. Long-term slash lasting side effects. Post-SSRI sexual dysfunction. Impacts on the fetus if pregnant. Lower birth weight. Birth defects. Premature birth. Extreme and rare side effects. Mania. 0.1% more likely than placebo. Hepatotoxicity. Increased toxicity in the liver. One case. Internal bleeding, especially when paired with a blunt thinner can decrease serotonin concentration in platelets. Akathisia, the inability to sit still to a painful extent. A side effect often associated with Lexapro is sexual dysfunction. While many will say, you can't come on Lexapro, the experience can vary from no sexual dysfunction, to delayed ejaculation, to complete inability to orgasm. If sexual stimulation is a large factor in your life, Speaking with a counselor or doctor to weigh the costs and benefits of Lexapro is a good idea. So if you're thinking about taking Lexapro, you're probably wondering, how effective even is it? Well, studies have shown there is little difference between the effectiveness of the leading SSRIs, 
Prozac, Zoloft, Lexapro, etc. They are all very effective. 10 to 20 milligrams of Lexapro has been shown to decrease scores on the Montgomery Asperger Depression Rating Scale, the Hamilton Rating Scale for Depression, and the Clinical Global Impression Severity Scale. Lexapro has also been shown to lower the relapse of depression, as relapse occurred 30% less on Lexapro than on the placebo. It has been shown that 10 milligrams of Lexapro is as effective as 40 milligrams of citalopram, even though neither are inherently better. Now, I've heard a lot about Lexapro withdrawal being talked about, so I wanted to research what happens when you stop taking Lexapro. A sudden and complete stop of Lexapro can cause discontinuation syndrome, also known as Lexapro withdrawal. However, withdrawal is an inappropriate word to use for this. It implies there was an addiction, and Lexapro is a non-addictive drug. The syndrome is more likely to occur in those who have been taking Lexapro for under six weeks, as a buildup of Lexapro has not yet occurred. Before going off of Lexapro, fluoxetine is often prescribed as it has a less severe discontinuation syndrome, and can thus be used to slowly take someone off the medication. There are several symptoms of Lexapro discontinuation syndrome, such as dizziness, loss of coordination, fatigue, feelings of tingling or zapping throughout the body and head, a burning sensation, blurred vision, insomnia, irritability, anxiety, vivid dreams, nausea, flu symptoms, and a lot of crying spells. However, like side effects, these vary wildly and can be lessened by first switching to fluoxetine or by gradually lowering your dosage before going off it. So there's a lot of fear over whether drugs are addictive and about whether you can overdose. We've already covered that Lexapro is a non-addictive drug. For most people, it is still being studied. But can you die from a Lexapro overdose? Short answer is, for most people, no. While Lexapro sensitivity varies between individuals, up to a thousand milligrams of Lexapro have been taken without death. The amount needed to overdose appears to be unreasonable to take in the time frame needed to die. However, taking more than prescribed is still dangerous, and if you think that you have overdosed, call a poison center or 911. Purging your stomach contents quickly or consuming activated charcoal to absorb extra Lexapro can be beneficial as you wait for the ambulance to arrive. This also doesn't mean that Lexapro can't kill you. It's just incredibly unlikely. Okay, speed round. What are some myths about Lexapro? Here are a few misconceptions and a brief explanation on why they are wrong. Lexapro causes weight gain. It can actually lead to appetite loss, which leads to weight loss. Lexapro gets you high. Lexapro enhances serotonin uptake when there is a lack of serotonin in the brain. This means that when you feel happiness from normal activities, you feel it more strongly, instead of at a reduced level due to your mental illness. Lexapro does not create serotonin and will not deliver a high once taken. Many overdoses are from people who try to get high and feel nothing, or people who take it and assume it's not working. Lexapro is an expensive drug. It's actually only $67 a month for 10 milligram daily dosage, and this is a pretty normal price compared to other SSRIs. You can't come on Lexapro. <laughs> As stated earlier, it varies. Dysfunction could go away after a few weeks. Okay, here's the most interesting question that I looked into. How is Lexapro impacted by genetics? Often if you have a family member who's had a good reaction to a certain SSRI, the doctor will recommend that one for you. So does genetics actually play a role in response to Lexapro? And how come if my grandfather had a bad reaction, I'm more likely to have a bad reaction too? To answer this, we need to look into how Lexapro is metabolized. Several proteins in the liver are involved in processing Lexapro, and the ones that have been identified as the most involved in this process are CYP2C19, CYP2D6, and CYP3A4. I listened to two of those earlier. The impact conversion of Lexapro to s dimethylcitralopram. Those who have better performing metabolizing enzymes have the rapid or ultra-rapid metabolizer phenotype. Those with worse enzymes, such as a mutant one or an inactivated one, have the reduced or poor metabolizer phenotype. A study on the interaction between ASD and Lexapro showed that those with ultra-rapid metabolizers are more sensitive to Lexapro than those with reduced or poor metabolizers. Scientists measured how much Lexapro an individual could take daily before experiencing negative side effects. Rapid metabolizers hit their limit at a lower dose, while those with reduced metabolizers had to take more Lexapro to have negative results. If a doctor prescribes an amount that gets good results for a reduced metabolizer to an ultra-rapid metabolizer, they'll experience negative responses. A person could be so good at metabolizing a drug that any dose is too high. This is likely one of the reasons that a relative's reaction to a drug can be a clue into predicting yours, because you likely have the same metabolizers.